Here's what's wrong holding your keys like this for self-defense. It's uncomfortable in your hand, almost impossible to make a proper fist. Then you have to know how to throw a proper punch and it's an uneven surface. So when you strike something, you might end up hurting your own hand. Instead, try holding your keys like this with one large key between your thumb and the edge of your finger. This is more secure. It's more comfortable in your hand it's easier to strike with, and when you get to your car or house, it's easier to let yourself in. If you're on a date or at a bar and the guy is not listening to or respecting your desire for him to back off, you might not necessarily want to injure him, but here's a little something you can do to reinforce your no. Target his sternal notch. That's the little divot at the base of your throat. You want to aim about an inch up and think about going about two inches in and an inch down, like a sideways J. You can test it on yourself. It's not pleasant, but you'll see the reaction. Press in and down. It's not going to seriously injure the guy, but it should make him gag, choke, probably take a step backwards and maybe rethink how he's acting. If someone is assaulting you and threatening your life, consider a throat strike. Even if your attacker is 7 feet tall and 300 pounds, no one can grow muscle over the windpipe. It's always vulnerable and easily damaged, but throat strikes can cause serious injury and should only be used if your life is at risk. <laughs> Being grabbed from behind, choked, and dragged away is a terrifying situation, but there are some strategies you can use to escape. This is not a choreographed routine we want you to memorize, but rather some key strategies to learn. First, protect your airway by dropping your chin, raising your shoulders, and if you can, getting your fingers into his arms. If it's tight, you might not be able to pull his arm down, but you can reach back and try to find one of his eyes with your fingers. You can do this by feel alone. An eye strike causes pain and distracts your attacker. Next, turn your body into your attacker and bite that causes an involuntary sudden reaction and when he lets go, deliver a knee strike to buy enough time to safely escape. Here are two more options to break a choke against a wall that might even work for shorter girls. The first is a hard kick or a knee to the groin. The second option uses leverage to break my attacker's grip. First, I reach my hand straight overhead to create leverage. I twist my whole body to break his grip. I drop my body weight and elbow to trap his hands. Then I swing with a hard elbow to his head. Now, of course, these are just demonstrations done in slow motions to help me and you learn the proper mechanics. In a real life self-defense situation, it's gonna be done much more fluidly, much more quickly, and of course, with more force. Here's one for the shorter girls who asked, what if my attacker is way taller and I can't reach his eyes? What then? Here's an option. Take the stiffened fingers of one hand and drive them into your attacker's neck. It's important to keep those fingers stiff and drive your shoulder off the wall. This gives you several more inches of reach. You're going to be targeting the soft cartilage of the attacker's throat. It's delicate and easily damaged. Remember, you may need to follow up with an additional strike, something like an eye strike or a knee, to buy enough time to escape. All right, so we just did a bunch of videos as realistically as possible. And I told Dina, just fight tooth and nail. And those are our main strategies. In fact, you can see I'm cut. She's been cutting my lip. The second time he's doing this. Yeah. But that's fine because I want to show that our strategies that we promote are just different than anything else. Self-defense is not a one, two, three. There is no one, two, three ABC. You have to go in there with certain strategies and be willing to change them up. But fighting tooth and nail is first and foremost. Partnering tactile awareness drill for the eyeballs. Take this very seriously. Get someone that you love to put their hands on your head. Put the thumb pads on the eyeballs. And now you press until you hear the safe word. Ah, fuck! Put your hands on me. Put your hands on me. Put your hands on me. Ah! Aren't you just gonna take that? Ah! Oh, will you fucking fight back? Here's another way you can break the hold if someone is on top of you and trying to choke you. Remember, you have to follow up with another strike or your attacker will just continue the attack. Here we show you two options. In the first, I target the attacker's eyes. In the second, his throat. Now let's back that up, slow it down, and take a closer look. 
First, I extend my hands overhead and drive my elbows into his arms, which breaks his grip and launches his body forward. Then I drive my thumbs into his eyes. In the second version, I drive my elbows into his arms, and when his body launches forward, I grab his windpipe with both hands. Then I kick with my heels and scramble to my feet. If you're being choked, you literally have seconds to react. In this situation, you're being choked and mounted. As you can see, it's a messy, mad scramble, but there are a few key strategies at play. Let's back that up and take a closer look. First, I'm targeting his throat with stiffened fingers. Notice how I torque my shoulder to give myself some extra length. Then I grab his head and bring him close. That's important so I can drive my thumbs into his eyes. While he's dealing with that pain, I can push him to the side, pull up my knees, and kick. The heel kicks give me space so I can safely get to my feet. And if you need to buy some extra time, you can finish off with a stomp kick to a knee, ankle, or head. Self-defense by nature is dangerous and unpredictable, which is why we teach strategies rather than step-by-step -step instructions. Even this training session didn't go as planned. Let's back up and take a closer look. I was trying to push his hand off of my head, but couldn't quite. I was able to relieve enough pressure so I could spin around and fight to get my fingers into his eyes. Once he let go, I kicked to create space and scrambled to my feet. If someone's on top of you face down trying to choke you, pull their arm down and bite it to get them to let go. Drive your fingers into their eyes, use your bicycle kicks to get out from underneath them, and then if you can, give them a good punt in the head on your way out. So I have had you. The more you struggle, the more I have to balance out, right? If you push away, I have to balance out as well. This gives you that option. What I mean by that is, I have to open up my stance to hold you. So that gives you the option, of course, to go right up to the legs, just like that, right? So it's gonna make more sense when you hit a bag, but you're gonna lean back because you're gonna take an impact. Right now you had to balance yourself, but when you hit the bag, you can just drive right up through it, all right? So again, I grab you and you just drive up into the legs. So there's something you're gonna hear over and over on this account, and it's the name of our company and it's our number one strategy and philosophy, and it is fingers over fists. And it speaks to the fact that if you're in a life-threatening situation or a sexual assault, you are much better to keep your hands open and use them in a grabbing manner, grabbing your attacker's throat or grabbing to their eyes than closing your fist and trying to throw a, a hard tactic like a punch at your attacker. However, we also recognize that there are a lot of situations where an eye strike or throat strike are not appropriate, like bullying situations. And there are times like that when a punch could be required or an elbow or a knee. So in the upcoming videos, we're actually going to teach you how to use those techniques properly, but don't be confused. They don't replace the eyes and throat as the number one serious self-defense. <laughs> <laughs> Grab her from behind. I got her arms trapped. All she has is either a heel or a head. Head is an amazing weapon. She's gonna throw her head back and she's gonna find my face. Give me a hard one. Oh, fuck yeah. Thank you. Yep. Oh, here you go. Once I let go, she's gonna turn around and tie her cap. Another thing to do if someone grabs you is small joint manipulation. Real big term for fucking breaking fingers, basically what it is. So if I grab her and she can reach in and grab one, I mean, just my pinky alone, if she can get her fingers all around one finger and rip it towards where I don't go, sideways! Ah, fuck. As soon as it goes sideways, it's instant. You can break that finger so easily. So once she can, like, I mean, if I grab on hard, I try to, if she fights and gets under the, ah, fuck! It is incredibly easy for her to break my finger. So break your finger, small joint manipulation, we can call it. Uh, whatever you will, it's quite effective. But again, you gotta reach in, focus intently, grab one finger, break it, the other way. Pinching is a really cool tactic to do to someone that's not expecting it and to get the person to react so that you can counter react. It's not obviously a fight stopper, but it's really important that you do know how to do a pinch properly. You want to cause like a mechanical rolling effect. So with your thumb rolling into your knuckles, and when you pinch the skin, you want to roll it into that knuckle. So the two major places for you to strike or to attack with a pinch would be back behind the triceps and back behind the leg, the frontal nervous system here. Again, what you want to do is you want to grab the skin and roll it into it. So from here, grab and then Fuck, that hurts. 
gonna grab behind my bicep. And she's gonna roll. Nope. 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 You gotta do it. I know, but I'm bad at this one. Yeah. The federal nervous system that runs behind the back of the leg is a really good place to pinch. If someone has you in a headlock, they can reach back there and grab. Ah, fuck! Fuck, that hurts. So I was that kid in class. This is what I've always been doing: is kind of figuring out, testing the limits and the boundaries of what we can actually do for self-defense. I was that kid in class biting myself. Grade five, I, I can see it now. I'm in class, couldn't give a shit what was up, what was up, up on the board. And I'm there, and I'm, uh, and I'm trying to bite and see how much power and pressure it would take to cause my own reaction and own pain threshold. So literally for tactile awareness, I want you guys to bite yourself. Guys, girls, bite yourselves. If you really want to learn this, you want to imprint in your head and realize how much this can actually do to you. Uh, So your mouth can bite any part. If, if I have her from here and my face is there, she could grab and bite me, like Mike Tyson the ear. Like biting is such a very, very, very useful tactic. Biting is a great tactic no matter what part of my body gets close to her mouth. So if I wrap her up and I have her like this and she's ah What she's gonna do is she's gonna use the side part of her mouth there, and she's gonna look for the knuckle. I'm just gonna break down it and literally break the pressure of my knuckle. Break it down. Ah! Once I have that time to release a react, what if someone grabs me? Well, you have your mouth, and this is one of those great times that you can use your mouth as a great grab release. From here, now she tries to pull my hand towards her, it's not happening. But she can always put her body. In self defense, it happens. Shit happens and hitting happens. And you need to learn how to block. So Dina's cracked it by herself, but let's put it in a little bit more reality. So what you're gonna do is grab someone that has you know arms that can throw them at you at a decent pace so that you can learn to get some contact. So Dina's gonna learn how to put her helmet on. Now that's a decent Pace and it's a decent hit, was it not? Yes. Right? I didn't go full contact, but it was enough for her to react and realize, man, I better put this arm on. So practice this, get a friend. Your hands come up and making sure that you can still see your attacker. Your arm is right close to your head so that if you get hit, you're not smacking yourself with your arm, but it's actually there to absorb the impact. And make sure to practice from both sides.